61 and then later well, 61 with the bridge going through and then when Teleco uh, Dam came through, you know, it, it took away two-thirds of the acreage in Bustletown, and so it changed quite a bit. After those changes, how did that make you feel? Well, we were leaving at that time, most of us were. Uh, um, I'll tell you what a friend of mine told me, he said, you went to a two-room school and you're teaching here? <laughs> uh, but it just, it was just where we're home. That's all, that's all I feel. I don't know how he feel. Well, I really didn't care one way or another. Right. I mean, it was uh, um, part of my past. Mm -hmm. I'm not ashamed of it. But uh, uh, I learned a lot during that period of time that uh, uh, from other people uh, that I wasn't, wasn't supposed to associate with. We had to learn that. <laughs> you know, you had to, and uh, I'll tell you one story okay. that uh, you may be interested in. And my mother to this, well, the day she died, she didn't really know the extent of what she was approving for me to do. The deputy sheriff, who was Doc Archer, I can't remember his first name, but maybe you, you know. I don't know the first name. He had a store at Centerville, which was halfway between uh, Greenback and Bustletown. But he was the deputy sheriff, and he came to my mother and asked if I could drive his car. Asked first of all if I could drive, and I, it, my dad taught me to drive starting at nine years old. I think he started. Back yeah, to, we're a dirt road, you know. Yeah. Starting at about the same, the same time. Same year, I might have started earlier than, than her because I was a boy. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, he came and my mother approved for me to go with him to drive his car through the gates that he was going to go in down toward the Little Tennessee River. This was before the Tilico Dam, where the, a steel was, and he was supposed to go in that way to keep the, the steel makers, mm -hmm. the whiskey makers, from coming out this way toward Greenback and toward Bustletown. Uh, and to escape. Well, and the red, other deputies were going to come in from the river on okay. my boat to the, where the steel was. And we got close to it. We, I could smell it, and I still know what that smell smells like uh, of the illegal whiskey that was being made in the barrel. And we, when we got there, the, the, the makers of the whiskey had, had escaped. They'd probably been tipped off that they were going to be. Uh, Rated. Rated, that's the word I was looking for. Uh, it was going to be rated, and they had gone, and the, the other were waiting on Doc Archer to get there before they started dismantling the steel. And that smell, I, I can smell something today that smells similar to it, and I automatically think about that time. Yeah, the mash. My mother the would never let you down there. No, she never, she never would permit me to have gone down there with Doc Archer. But th she knew him, and he did explain to her what he was going to do, what he was doing. And so I got, I was there immediately upon them before they started destroying the mash. And uh, it, it came out uh, and rolled off down toward the Little Tennessee River, and went into the, which would not be permitted today. I mean, EPA would not permit a steel to be uh, dismantled and the mash going to the, into a stream right. of any kind, uh, much less the Little Tennessee River. But uh, I tell you that because uh, it was so unlike my mother to permit me to do that uh, if she had really known what was going to go on. I didn't know what was going to happen either until I got down to the steel and I saw. I was delighted to be there because that was something that was, was uh, uh, I wouldn't be permitted to do, and it was something that uh, no other kid, probably at my age, had been permitted to do either. A little entertainment. That's right. Yeah. And let the record show that he never shared that story with me, so it's not in my book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't share that with you. I did love Boston. I mean, to me, it was home. Sure. And. And I just accepted it as it was. Of course, my dad knew better, but I did. <laughs> apparently, I think this is one of the ironic things. My mother and daddy both were in Richmond, North Akron, and they 
one of them is from over mid and daddy and mother from Danny King and then they got married. They knew each other there in Akron. Old bus tanner. Old bus will tell you. You asked yeah. about how they re remember this, but I think it's interesting that me coming from Chicago as a little kid saw saw, saw it as in a different way than they did. You know, yeah, you it did. was just a whole different world and idyllic and go down toward the, the lake to get the cows with the woman who rented us the, the place I, for the trailer I, and all. You know, this was, going to the cow, actual cows, that was a trip. And yeah. So I suppose when you came from the Chicago area to Bustle Town, what, what were your thoughts? Did you think, oh, Lord of mercy, what has mom and dad got me into? Or no, did I, you, I didn't. Did you I enjoy didn't, it? I didn't feel that. I think I did later on. <laughs> you were too sometime. young at that time. Yeah, I was too young and I just enjoyed being on the farm and what was going on. Yeah. Uh, you enjoyed going down and get the cattle. Oh, yeah, yeah, because of Miss Ethel, especially. Yes. You know, she, she loved children and she, she made brought us preach to you on the way down there. Oh, probably handy tracks. He yeah. didn't know. He, did. he was too old. And this lady, Miss Ethel Thompson, who would, um, well, I, I won't try to figure out the years with you, but. She taught in Lenore City too, and she walked the dam. She walked. But, you know, that was before. Way before. Before I ever taught. Way before, yeah. Long, way before. But we were living there, and she come, somebody came to tell her they discovered that she uh, she had a pension from the school system or something, okay. and she had just you know she made her own uh, cottage cheese and milked her cows and, <laughs> and, and, and everything and was wrapped up in many layers of clothes and her hair up in a bun, and she was a character obviously. Everybody must have thought it wasn't as interesting. To as she was. But when they gave her the money, she said, I was there, she said, oh, it would be so nice to have a little money to press into the preacher's hand on Sunday. <laughs> 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 so that's how she saw right. money. You know, money wasn't part of her equation exactly, I don't think. Yeah. Well, when, they, uh, when they put the bridge through and they did the, the teleco dam before that, we found historical artifacts. Yes. Uh, Could you expand on as that? a matter of fact, with the uh, not necessarily with the Fort Loudon Dam, it hadn't gotten to the point nationally that those things were important. It, it, you know, it later on that they became, became more important. By the time the Teleco Dam was was uh, built and uh, impounded, the lake was impounded. Uh, there was a lot of work went on by TVA and because they were required to do it before they, the lake was impounded. Uh, about the, what was going to be covered up by the, the, uh, by the lake. Uh, there still were, were Indian mounds and, and other things that they didn't investigate, TVA didn't investigate, that were still on the property that they conveyed to TRDA for us to manage. But we couldn't, there are areas that, that we could not sell to residential property owners or to, to uh, industrial property owners. Uh, because they had, they had, they had cleared that property, they had cleared that Indian mound, and when the property was sold to a couple of communities, there was a huge Indian mound that is pretty close to where Tilco Parkway comes into uh, Highway 72, and uh, Cooper had to had to agree that they would prevent TVA at any time in the future to come in. To to dig into that mound to find artifacts. So, in a, in a sense, uh, Cooper preserved that f for future generations to find any artifacts that were in that Indian mound. Uh, TVA probably did not do a good job as they should have, and they would have been required to if it were done today, where the lake was impounded. Uh, there was a lot of things probably covered up by the lake that will never be found. I want to go back and something you said in introducing me to this subject. You said two thirds of Bustletown was taken, but that's it's two thirds of Bustle Island got lost in closing the Teleco okay. Dam. What would you say? Twenty percent of Bustletown, of the peninsula between the two dams, maybe ten percent. Not a lot of Bustle Town itself was lost. Okay, probably about twenty twenty five percent. What really we could combined with the two dams together. All the public buildings were right down the middle, and that's why the road is what really sort of erased yeah. the, so all the schools and the churches. Bustle Island 
Bus alignment, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, two thirds. It's, it's, I know it's confusing all the time.